I'm in the Jewish quarter of Kazimierz in Krakow. This week is the annual Jewish culture festival. It's a cause for celebration. Two Polish Jews have invited me on a tour of the city. This is the week when I can see Jews in the old streets in Krakow. This is the best here for me. Also, I can uh, listen lectures, be, be on the concerts, but for me, this is important that the Jews are here. And I can go to the street and say I'm proud Jew. Displays of Jewish pride in Poland, just one hour away from Auschwitz, is not something I'd expected. Karolina Wantuch and Slavek Pastuszka have only just started practicing their faith openly. Slavek is only 21, but he's already being called the future rabbi of Krakow. He and Karolina are at one of the biggest Jewish cultural events in the world. People even speak of a revival of Judaism in Poland, a country where much of the Jewish population was murdered by the Nazis. But is this a genuine revival, or is it all just folklore? There have been reports of anti-Semitic tendencies in Poland over the last few years, but there's no sign of that here. The Jewish community uses a rather unique advertising slogan to persuade people to donate. Next morning, I accompany Slavek at prayer. It's only been a few years since he stopped hiding his religion. The synagogue may look empty, but more and more young Polish Jews are being open about their faith. Those in Krakow are traditionalist and follow many rules, like wrapping leather-bound extracts from the Torah around their arms. And around their foreheads. Slavek takes these customs seriously. The community in Krakow is growing steadily. In just two years, its numbers rose from 200 to 400. Not all of them have a Jewish mother. Here, a Jewish grandparent counts too. After prayers, Slavik invites me to Krakow's Jewish cemetery to show me his hobby. He translates Hebrew engravings on the gravestones so that other Poles can discover their Jewish ancestry. I think I have this grave here. I try, I try to find this grave here. The official names was Herman Federgrin, but in Hebrew, Tzvi ben Avraham, Tzvi son of Abraham. Slavek says that a Jew without history isn't a Jew. That's what makes the cemetery so important for modern Jewish life in Krakow. More and more Poles want to find their Jewish roots. They ask, where is the grave of my father? I think he is buried here. And from JCC called to me, Sławek, we need your help. And go to JCC, I check the surname, and I try to help these people to find the grave of their family. Karolina also wants to uncover her Jewish history. She first found out she was a Jew just two years ago. And now she's meeting a genealogist to discover whether her grandfather really was one. She had some evidence to show him, including a picture which her grandfather drew during his incarceration in Auschwitz. The genealogist Szegorz Kembala is convinced by the evidence. This is, for instance, the birth certificate of uh, the grandfather and the original circumcision certificate in this case. 
Carolina is happy that the documents are definitely real. But why is this all coming so late? She takes me to meet her family on the outskirts of Krakow. Her mother, Danuta Vantuch, had kept the family in the dark about this part of their history. She didn't even tell her husband. Now they want to discuss the matter as a family. Carolina became suspicious because her senile grandmother had always claimed that there was a Jew in the family. So she researched and asked around, until Danuta admitted that her grandfather was Jewish. Carolina asks her mother what she used to think whenever she told her that she'd have liked to be Jewish. Danuta says she thought something bad could happen if she let it slip. The knowledge could put Carolina in danger one day. She says that the few colleagues who knew the secret would always ask her if she was afraid that she'd be sent away. And she would tell them, yes, she was. Carolina goes with Danuta to visit her grandfather's grave. He's buried in a Catholic cemetery instead of a Jewish graveyard. Carolina asks her mother why. She tells her he'd have preferred to be buried in a Jewish graveyard, but he wanted the family to assimilate, to keep them safe. Her father had survived Auschwitz. He was determined to spare his family a similar fate. When Polish politicians stirred up hatred against Jews at the end of the 60s, he repressed his Judaism forever. Danuta grew up in this fearful environment. But she says she feels better since revealing her Jewish roots, more authentic, more confident. But that doesn't mean her fear has disappeared. She admits she is still afraid. We go back to the car. On the way, we stumble across some anti-Semitic graffiti. After everything I've experienced with Carolina and her family, I'm speechless. But then I see some more, and yet more, and eventually realize it's on every corner. So do Jewish people in Poland still have reason to be afraid after all? To find out more, I leave Krakow and drive on to Warsaw to meet photographer Piotr Piluk. He's been documenting anti-Semitic graffiti for decades. Piotr tells me that football fans are usually the perpetrators, using the term Jew to insult each other. He shows me his photos. This one says, Jews, blacks, gypsies, get out. He tells me that a lot of graffiti isn't just about Jews, it's also about Afro-Americans and Roma. He says it's a disturbing signal. Pavel Bramson works at a kosher canteen in a Jewish quarter in Warsaw. He used to be an anti-Semite himself, but now he works as a kosher inspector. He sees to it that complicated Jewish dietary laws are adhered to in the canteen. It's hard to imagine he used to plaster anti-Semitic slogans on walls. He hasn't known about his Jewish ancestry for long either. No, because the mother and father is not telling me. Because the devil is my wife, because the change is my documents from the Jew Jewish Institute history from the Warsaw. They changed my document, and the, the document is the, in the, in the census I am the Jew. I am the, the 22 year I am the, he's now I am the, the Jew. And the next, I am changed, it's my life. 
First, Pavel started eating kosher, and then he stopped shaving. Finally, he changed the way he dressed. The strange look he received from other Polish people didn't surprise him one bit. 12, 15 years ago, I am looking like me now. I also to look, because I'm the shock. Who is this? The, the Jewish in the, walking the street in the Poland, it's not normal. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Pavel was once an anti-Semite. He discovered his Jewish roots 10 years ago, and now he's a devout Jew. So what does he think about the anti-Semitism in Poland? I don't know. I think this is the better. It's better like uh, 10 years ago. Now it's... I don't, I don't know. I think this is the better. That seems to be the opinion of everyone I speak to, and Pavel's story also gives me hope. I take one more trip back to Krakow, just in time for the end of the Jewish Culture Festival. I want to celebrate the Sabbath with Karolina and Danuta. Today, lots of Jews are visiting the synagogue to pray together. I'm briefly allowed into the sacred building. Technically, I'm not allowed to film here anymore. The Sabbath is holy, and the new Jews in Poland take their traditions seriously. It's clear to me that this is more than just a passing fashion.